All right, so here we are in the wall booth, and we're going to work on Tipsy. She's a little toy poodle. She's kind of an old lady, missing some teeth and everything, and she's got plenty of hair. So we're going to do Tipsy in a German trim. So right now, I'm just going to start by just fluffing her up, because she was just brought to me for the demo. Before I completely fluff her up, let's start by doing her feet and face and getting that out of the way. So I am going to use the Bravera Clipper, and this has a lithium battery, so it lasts, the battery lasts a really long time. And it has five settings to the blade, so it goes from a 40, 30, 15, 10 to a 9 blade. And the beauty of this clipper is that the blade does not get hot. So you can do all your tiny little toy feet or your big feet, however long it takes you to do them and not have to worry about clipper burning or irritating the dog's skin. Now, toy poodles is really, really common that they have the, the knee problems where their, their kneecap will actually pop out of, out of place. So I'm always really careful when I'm doing the, I try to keep the leg as close to the body as possible when I'm doing the toys. And I try not to lift it off of the table very high either. <laughs> now, one thing that when you're having trouble getting the hairs like around the toenails, you can actually turn your clipper around and push the hair away from the toenail in this direction too. So you can kind of get like right under the toenail and push the hair away. So it, it will actually cut in both directions. That's a good girl. And I usually just come up to that, that joint right here. I'm, I have this actually on a 30 blade setting. In, in, with a, you know, with the, the darker dogs, like I'll, I'll do probably a 30 blade setting on, on these guys. On my own dogs, they're so used to it, I use the 40 blade on this, which is not actually quite as close as a regular 40, you know, clip on 40 blade. Um, but if I think the dog might have a little bit sensitive skin, then I'll use a 10 blade or a 15 blade, but those fine little hairs around the toenails are always harder to get with the longer blade. So you can just bump it up to a 30 or a 40 just to do the toenails or around the lip line or anything. So and when I pick up her back leg, I try to just kind of, like I said, hold it close to her body. Turn it this way. Look at how tiny that foot is. Good. Scoop in and out. I'm switching to the mini, the mini Brevera. So this is like really nice when you're doing the toy poodle feet because it is so tiny. You can, it's great for puppies because you can kind of hide it in your hand. It's super quiet and there's no vibration to it or anything. Um, the only downside of this is it's a 30 blade. So it doesn't, it doesn't have different blade settings on it like the, like the regular Brevera does. Come here, sweetie. But for doing these tiny little feet, it's just nice and easy to be able to use it to maneuver all around the feet. Good girl. So I guess this little girl has been used in grooming contests multiple times. And she's getting a little bit old and her coat's thinning out, so now she's going to be a demo dog. So in the, the thing to remember when you're doing the feet is you want to go with as light a touch as possible. Good girl. 
And again, even with the front feet, I always try to keep the feet as close to the body as possible. If you're having a hard time where the dog is doing like a lot of tugging and pulling and everything, it's, you, you probably are doing something that's making the dog a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, with a lot of dogs, they just don't like, ha like having their feet touched. But if, if you're really having a hard time, just think about the position that you have the dog in because a lot of times it's just, especially new groomers, you're so focused on doing a really good job that you're not thinking about where you have the foot and location to the dog. Um, you know, the back legs, like I've seen groomers where they, they have the back leg up higher than the hip. And, you know, and then, and then I'll, I'll show them how to do something. And they'll say, oh, you make that look so easy. How come the dog's behaving for you? And that's, that's the main reason is that I always try to make sure that I have the comfort of the dog in mind. And then they don't fuss so much. Yeah, I, I almost do it like, um, kind of like, you know, if you wanted to expose the nails on a cat, how you kind of like spread here. So I use my finger underneath and then my thumb on top and you can just kind of go through and spread all the toes really easy. Yep, on, on, so on the bottom of her foot, I'll hold her this way. And I'll just kind of scoop this stuff out. I'm gonna come up the same distance going all the way around her foot. I scoop in and scoop out again. This is a 30 on this, on this clipper. This is the Mini Brevera and it, it just has a 30 blade setting on it. But it's so, Huh? I don't have the mini, I have the other one. Feel it. I turn it on, see how light it is. It's Can you feel it on your hands? Wow. That's amazing. Isn't it? So, like, I find, like, when I'm doing, like, puppy ears, like, say, schnauzer ears or something like that, I mean, instead of having, like, this big corded clipper coming at your puppy's head, you've got this, and I usually will turn it on and just kind of start by, you know, touching the puppy with it and letting them feel it and everything, but there's so little vibration. Most times it's the sound of the, the clipper hitting the hair that they kind of, they get a little bit startled, but then they, you know, then they're fine with it because it's, there's really nothing to it that would be scary for them. So, and this is nice for doing like all my toy feet, you know, even like, you know, any, anything that I'm doing where I, even if I'm just doing the pads of the feet. So you can just kind of scoop in and out really easy. And like I said, it's the, the downside is that it's a 30 blade. So if you have a dog that maybe has a little bit sensitive skin, I wouldn't go as close on the pads. Turn this way, honey. I find a lot of times with my toy poodles, sometimes, especially if they're, if they're puppies, sometimes it's easier to just sit down and hold the dog in your lap. Because I just find that the, the closer that you hold them to your body, the more secure they feel, and the less likely they are to start jumping around and everything. And if it, you know, it might take you a little bit longer when you're working on a young dog, but in the long run, when you're hoping that dog is gonna come to you, hi, Barb. <laughs> for like another 15, 20 years, hopefully, then you know it's, you want that dog to be a happy dog through its grooming. You don't want to start off a puppy and really traumatize it and then have to deal with that every single time the dog is groomed. So take the time with your puppies to make sure that you, you're laughing at me doing this toy foot, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was just telling Bob yesterday, I hate doing toy poodle feet. <laughs> This is a little sweetie. Yeah, it's really yeah, good. Honestly, just, Honey. just knows you love to Huh? She knows you love poodles. It is funny. Don't you think that poodle, poodles know poodle people? They do. It's like all of a sudden they're, they're like climbing all over you and... Thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna do a whole haircut on her, so eventually by the end of the day, she'll be done. <laughs> yeah. Now, even the way that I'm holding her right now, 
because I have her whole stifle joint in my hand. She's actually like leaning on me, but it's keeping her from tugging and pulling. So, you know, it's, it's okay if she wants to kind of just rest her weight on me and then I don't have to risk her popping her knee, kneecap out. So being a right-handed person, this is my harder foot and this one, it's usually the opposite. And if you're left-handed, then it's these two feet that are, the, that are the harder ones. But I find that a lot of times, because it's getting the inside of these toes that are hard. So a lot of times I'll do those inside toes from the back rather than from the side. On a, on a larger dog, if you can get them to sit down while you do the feet and just shift their hip and put their weight you know, on one hip, then a lot of times it's a lot easier to get it that way too. And I can get around the toenails and everything better from the backside rather than from the front. Good girl. I have one standard poodle that I do at my shop that hates when you make the blow sound. So, you know, every time I'm doing feet and I go, he goes, ah! <laughs> and it scares him every single time I do it. And I can't stop myself from doing it because it's such a habit. Now I'm gonna do the front of this foot. And again, I wanna try to keep her foot as close to her as possible. So it's a little bit easier to maneuver around the toy dogs than it is the stand dogs, the standard size poodles. Okay, baby. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch and do her face. And I don't wanna do her face this close because I don't really know this dog, so I'm gonna switch and use my Barrera. Hi, baby. Good girl. girl. So, and I'm gonna put this on the 15 setting just because I think, I mean, she's dark skinned, so she should be able to handle that without any problem. So I'm gonna, I flip her ear back and I'm gonna clip all this hair from in front of her ear. And then you wanna draw as straight a line as possible from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. And I wanna, I use my thumb and I pull the corner of her eye back and down, and that will help kind of close up her eye. Oh, it's okay. And just run the clipper right over the bottom of her, of her eyelid. Good girl. Good girl. And I think she's had some teeth removed, so I think she's a little bit more sensitive around her mouth. Good girl. And when I do my little V inside here, I mean, she doesn't have like a whole lot of space inside here, so I, when you do your V, you don't wanna come up higher than the eye itself. So I usually just kinda stick to like the center of the eye, and that's as high as I wanna bring my little V up. And it's an inverted V, so it's an upside down V. It's okay, it's all right. Yep. Okay, and then here when I do my little, my throat, purr, her Adam's apple is right about here. On my toys, I usually go about an inch or so below the Adam's apple. You never wanna come down so far. You don't wanna come down all the way to the breastbone because that makes them look very unecked. So I usually would just go just a little bit below the Adam's apple. It's 
So I find the center and I just make a little notch and then another one going this way. And then I want to bring that all the way up to the back corner of her ear. And then I just kind of clean that all up. Same on this side. It's okay, baby. Good girl. Good girl, it's all right. So I'm gonna pull that bottom jaw back and down to make sure that I get nice and tight all around her lips. Hi guys, how you doing? Under, yeah. So I never, I never take, I never go above the eye. I always just kind of, it's that, it's that pocket underneath here that you want to take, but you don't want to go higher. You don't want to go above the eye. You can see these little hairs on her lip. Stay. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. All right, now with her, we're going to we're going to put her in a German trim. So I'm not going to shave um, a band on her tail cuz we're going to leave we're going to leave a little a little uh like a kind of a Kerry Blue style tail. So and I'm just gonna do around her rectum. So I switched this all the way to the longest setting, which is a nine blade setting. And you just wanna be careful not to, I try not to put the, the clipper like right on her rectum. I just wanna kind of scoop it away from either side just to kind of clean it up. It's okay, babe. Good girl. And then I want to do her sanitary area. And usually when I do the sanitary on any of these, any, any dogs, um, when I, again, when I pick up the leg, I try to hold it close. And a lot of times if I can, if it's long enough, I'll hold the tail with the leg. And that really supports the whole back end better. Stand her up this way. Good girl. And when I do when I do the belly on most of the breeds that I do a sanitary on, I just kind of skim it. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't, you don't have to get like every last hair in that area because I just find that they end up really irritated very easily because it's such a, you know, it's an area that light doesn't get at and the skin is a lot more sensitive there. So I try not to go very close there, and I also don't, um, I don't take off like every, every last hair. Even even on the males, a lot of times I'll leave like a little covering in their private areas just so they don't go home and scoot and scratch and everything. All right, so now we've got her feet and face done and her tail. I'm looking for the Northwest Grooming Show.
What? I never know what to do with this breed. The Northwest Grooming Show.